Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the Rushcliffe series. This is the southernmost district in Nottinghamshire and it contains 59 civil parishes of England. And there's some corkers down here. Let's dive in and check one out. Welcome back to Rushcliffe, everybody, for round two. Now, last week we saw Ratcliffe on Saw, and now we're working our way towards Nottingham. The next village over to the east is a lovely little place with a with a name that a, a few people, th I think, find a little bit humorous. I'm not quite sure why. Welcome to Thrumpton. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Thrumpton to Mother's Farm. Round two in Rushcliffe brings us to Thrumpton, or to Modeston as it was known originally. Lying on the southern bank of the River Trent in a very isolated part of Nottinghamshire, Thrumpton is a dead-end village, but it has a lot to talk about. Its biggest and most well-known feature is its huge 17th century mansion, owned and lived in by the writer Miranda Seymour. One of the most historic buildings anywhere in the county, Thrumpton Hall is accessed via a turreted gatehouse and a long driveway, and it has, in the past, played host to some very interesting characters. Among their number would be the poet Lord Byron, who Seymour herself is distantly related to. Byron's daughter, the mathematician Ada Countess Lovelace, would often visit her relations at Thrumpton Hall from her mother's home at Kirby Mallory. Before the Byrons came John Wescombe Emerton, who made several alterations to the hall and built most of Thrumpton Village's oldest properties. He was preceded by the Piggotts, and before them came the Roman Catholic Powdrels, who were evicted. All of these families have left their mark on the mansion and the village as a whole, which has a church, a village hall, an angling club, and lots of gorgeous red brick cottages. It's time for a walk, folks, along the River Trent once again. We begin with a short drive into the village via Barton Lane and Church Lane. We've just passed Manor Farm on the junction between the two. It might not have looked like much from the outside, but sometimes the most innocuous of buildings have the most interesting things. Manor Farm is the base of a publishing company, the Nottingham University Press. They're a small publisher who focus primarily on the fields of animal and food science. The press is owned by Notice Limited, the trading arm of the university, and it was founded in 1992 by Dr. Des Cole and Dr. Phil Garnsworthy. From its humble beginnings, it's now an internationally recognised press with representation in over 90 countries, and it's published well over 200 books. Modern initiatives now mean all of the press's books are routinely converted to e-books, which are then sold into libraries. The fact that this small sleepy corner of Rushcliffe has a publisher is actually not all that surprising. After all, this is a village which has a literary history, centred primarily on its huge mansion, Thrompton Hall. Before we begin our walk, it makes the most logical sense to first discuss Thrompton Hall. The hall is private, and as such, we can't walk to it. This historic house incorporates a substantial part of an older house which was occupied by the Roman Catholic Powderell family, who were evicted thanks to their involvement in the gunpowder plot. 
The main part of the hall was built in the early 17th century and was largely complete by 1617. Made of rosy brick, this was the home of the Piggotts and later became the main residence of John Westcombe Emerton, who built most of the oldest houses that stand in the village itself. Later it passed into the hands of the Byron family for a hundred years. It contains a library, a medieval kitchen, a double cube reception room, baronial hall and a priest hall. It also includes a collection of portraits, furniture and needlework, as well as various relics of the poet Lord Byron. The hall is renowned for its cantilevered Jacobean staircase, added to the house by the Piggotts, which shows their coat of arms and that of the Powderills. Church Lane is Thrumpton's main street. It forms a big arc around a field which we'll have to cross later to get back to the start. Amenities here are few, but it does have a phone box with a defib machine, even if there's no shop, pub or school. Originally called Term Modeston, Thrumpton is thought to have started life as a Viking farmstead. It developed around an important trade route along the River Trent and was soon a collection of huts and rustic farmhouses situated in what is now the parkland of Thrumpton Hall. River trade was key to Thrumpton's survival. In the mid-12th century, Nottingham was granted a charter allowing it to exact tolls on River Trent shipping between here and Newark. The village was selected for its position close to the county border. Later, Thrumpton became a river crossing with the installation of a ferry to Long Eaton. Modern businesses are few, but there are a couple. This old granary on your screen now is the base of Kobach. Founded in 2017, they provide security services for everything from the retail sector to logistics companies. We're in the centre of Thrumpton now and that's where we find the village hall. Built in 1962, Thrumpton's villagers have not only kept this their only community facility in good repair, but they've also made some significant improvements and alterations to it. It's a good size and it can be hired for both corporate and individual events. The parish notice board is on the wall and that's another Rushcliffe episode in the books. Now speaking of notice boards, there's also a second one not too far away, at the entrance to All Saints Church. Grade 2 listed and dating from the 14th century, All Saints is another of the five churches that make up the informal cluster known as the 453. In 1870 this was restored thoroughly by G.E. Street. It was ordered as such by Lady Byron of Thrumpton Hall and included a total rebuild of its chancel. The tower remained unaltered and it wasn't until 2004 that it underwent any form of repair. Set into an exterior wall is an unusual memorial. Dating from 1923, it features a recumbent soldier who represents the three men from the village who died during World War I. The road has now taken a turn to the north and we're making our way past some listed buildings like this barn, one of two at Thrumpton House. Dead opposite is Church House, probably the prettiest property in the village if you ask me. It dates from 1713, although it was greatly altered in the 19th century. A lot of the buildings from the 1700s date from when John Westcombe Emerton lived in Thrumpton Hall. There are newer ones here, they're not all ancient. Take these two as a pair of good examples. Now we come to a bend in the road upon which stands the gorgeous gatehouse to Thrumpton Hall. Almost as architecturally important as the hall itself, the gatehouse is a listed building, though its status also includes the cottages which are joined to it. The whole thing, cottages and all, were built in 1735. Thrumpton Hall is accessed via this gate, but it's strictly private. These days it's owned by English literary critic Miranda Seymour, a fellow of the Royal Society of Literature. The road now begins to bend the other way and there's a couple of houses left before it eventually comes to a dead end. One of them used to be the old post office, the one on your screen now. What we're effectively doing here is making our way to the southern bank of the River Trent, which forms not only the parish boundary, but also the district boundary. Although it's not often serious, it's not uncommon for this part of the village to flood. That's why you'll find this measuring stick by the water's edge.
The road runs into a car park. This is for the Ashfield Angling Club, whose presence can be found along several sections of the Trent and the River Saw. Keen anglers can catch barbel, carp and chub here, most likely in a nearby weirpool. It was at this point years ago that the Trent was crossed by the ferry to Long Eaton, now long since gone thanks to modern road bridges. Some of the nearby houses still bear the word ferry, preserving its history. Our last task is to take a footpath through the field, which runs back to the start. So as I suspected, this path is a bit muddy with the rain I kind of expected it was going to be. It passes a pond, which you can see there, to the left hand side, a reedy pond. But apart from that, it's just a field and you can see where we began over there. You can see the power station in the distance. That's a row of houses. You can see the car is parked literally just there. And that has been Thrumpton. A nice circular walk around a very interesting village here in Rushcliffe. Thrumpton is very close to East Midlands Airport and it's directly under the flight path. Seeing and hearing planes in the sky will be a regular feature in some upcoming Rushcliffe episodes, so if you're an aviation enthusiast, you're likely to enjoy them. Here's a taste of what's to come. After making my way back to the road, I hopped in the car and made for the next one. Just to the northeast of Thrumpton is the next village, one that has a peculiar name. Join me there in seven days time to learn about what it means, and even though it's in Nottinghamshire, it may be of interest to you if you live in Leicestershire. I'll see you there. Thanks for watching this video folks. Don't forget to like this episode if you haven't already, it really makes a difference with YouTube. If you're new here, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and give us a share too if you've got friends who'd like it. You can find all the links to my social media accounts below as well as my buy me a coffee page where you can donate to the channel. Also if you've enjoyed this episode, have a look at some more videos in this series. Until next time, I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiot, and I'm out. <laughs>